I never know whether one should paint a dark picture or a bright picture. And I'll do something in between. Uh, because uh, <clears throat> STEM education in South Africa has its good sides, but it has also very big problems. And I'll try to convey both of these. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm at the uh, I'm the chair of the STEM education in in uh, South Africa at the Academy of Sciences, and I'm also linked to the STIAS, the Stellenbosch Institute for Advanced Studies. <clears throat> uh, we see whether this works. Okay. So I just remove that one. Okay, and then I can go back that way as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, South, uh, South Africa has uh, 26 universities, and some of them are the best in Africa. Uh, at least the uh, if you believe in rankings in any way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Then the, uh, then the first five ranked uh, are like Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Johannesburg, Witts University, Pretoria University, and Durban, and they are among, they are on the international rating uh, list, and, and they are really uh, good, good universities. Uh, um, and the total number of students is over 300,000, uh, which compared to America is nothing. And, uh, but what is positive is that 50% of the mobile students in SADC, and I'll explain just now what a SADC is, it's, it's a, a larger region. Uh, the mobile students of those, that is those who do not study in their own home, uh, in their home country, uh, they study in South Africa. Uh, so uh, this is actually, uh, quite different from any other place in Africa, that uh, there is such a place where many, many African students come and study. Uh, so these are the positive things. I just thought I'd give you a picture of uh, a map of, uh, of uh, South Africa. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see uh, downwards, you see Cape Town. Uh, and that is the big city in the Western Cape province, and that's where I live, and, uh, and that is a, a very nice area, which I can all invite you to come and visit. And then I would like to show you the smaller province up there. These are the provinces, the various provinces. The small province up there is Pretoria and Johannesburg, and it's called the Gauteng <laughs> province, and it's uh, the richest pro province in South Africa. Uh, and it also has good universities. And, uh, and uh, then there is the KwaZulu-Natal on the right-hand side, uh, on the Indian Ocean, and that uh, has a fairly good, uni a really good university at Durban called University of KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, these, these uh, universities, I think, uh, we are proud of having them, but they have major challenges for all of these universities. The first is that the intake of students, they are ill-prepared. We don't get enough students in, with the right background from schools, and the throughputs are very low. Uh, students uh, often uh, take six years on a three-year course or something like that, so the throughputs are is a big, very big problem. Uh, now, the type uh, and the other problems are, well, the universities are autonomous, uh, so they govern themselves, each of them, uh, and uh, the more so if they have their own funds. Uh, but uh, they, they uh, get state subsidy, but this is decreasing now all the time. And uh, with that, we have a lot of pro protests at schools, at universities, with uh, fees must fall. Uh, so uh, the university community is, is quite unstable. Uh, <clears throat> and there are 
uh, three types of schools. They're private schools, and they, give, they have very good results also in science and, math uh, and mathematics. And then there are fee-paying public schools. Uh, we call them Model C schools. Uh, and they also have, to, to a large extent, uh, good results. And then we have fee-free public schools. And uh, some of them are good, but most of them are almost dysfunctional. And, uh, and this, is, this is terrible because <clears throat> it perpetuates the, the uh, difference in, uh, in, in, in our community, uh, that the people who do not have money and uh, cannot pay for the schools, the kids get, uh, don't get the uh, right type of education. Now, the total number of uh, students that uh, children uh, in grade one who enter the uh, schools is, is uh, 1.2 million. And uh, when they get to grade 12, they're only uh, 687,000. This was last year. Uh, I must say in grade 10, there are still quite, quite a bit, uh, about, say, a million still in the schools, but then they drop off very quickly. And uh, the results in maths and science are considered to be gatekeepers for, for uh, the, uh, all the important courses like engineering, uh, medicine, and so on. Uh, and so this brings into our science and maths education an, uh, an element of uh, grade chasing. Uh, people in the last three years before they try to get the best uh, possible points, uh, marks, and so on. And then uh, they don't really learn that much, but they are being assisted from outside, with outside help uh, to, get, uh, to get through uh, at a level uh, where, they, where, where their grades uh, let them go into universities. Now, the, uh, South Africa has uh, three academies. Uh, the, uh, the two original ones were the Royal Society of South Africa, which still exists, and that, uh, which is in the English thing coming directly from England, and then there's the South Afrikaans Academy for Wittenskap and Kunz, uh, which was the Afrikaans part of it, and uh, they both exist still, uh, but the, uh, but the uh, National Academy now is ASAF, the National Academy of Sciences, and it is recognized as such by government, and it is appointed by government, and, and the government also asked them, us to do certain things. Now, recently in the STEM education, uh, just to give you a flavor of what we do, uh, we had uh, a consensus study on agricultural education and training, and this was necessary to change the whole system of educational uh, uh, agricultural education, uh, because uh, the the, the uh, f f farmers are are changing. I mean, there are lots of people who used to be laborers, who who now learn uh, to to become farmers themselves, and so on. Uh, so that was one of the studies. Then the second one I'd like to mention is a three-year pilot project, which in schools, which we had in Pretoria with Lamar Lapat, and uh, in, uh, it was that program, actually, and uh, we had a lot of support from, from uh, France and uh, also the French embassy, and, and that was a very good project, project. It was evaluated, and it was evaluated very positively. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't find money to continue it, uh, and, uh, but we, we haven't given up yet. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, there was, we had a very nice workshop now, and we're making a study on bringing together the mathematical sciences uh, or finding synergies in the mathematical sciences so that uh, mathematics is not something which is separate, uh, but which is actually connected to, to the subjects in which it is uh, being uh, being used, and that, that, that actually should start already at school level, and then it should go through, through the university when you've set up uh, systems of uh, uh, 
for teaching uh, mathematics at university level. Uh, now, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have the, the uh, we want to start a new IPSA, uh, that's um, science education and maths education initiative in the Western Cape. Uh, it's easier for me to have it there because uh, I live there. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the, there are four universities there, and each of them has a training uh, as a uh, training faculty for teachers, and this is the the best universities: uh, uh, Cape Town University and Stellenbosch University, and the University of Western Cape, which some of our people know here, and then there's the, also the. Uh, uh, the uh, Cape uh, Peninsula University of Technology, uh, which has a French connection, by the way, that there's a French, uh, a lot of French investment in, 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 uh, in CPUT. Uh, so the, the advantages of this whole, whole effort is that the economy of the region, which is the Western Cape, is well managed and is sound. Uh, there are several scientific establishments there. Uh, there is also a, a good science center. And I would actually like to propose that we add this idea that there should be a science center should be supported by, by uh, countries. C countries should really support science centers because many of these things are on private initiative and the only way they can really make their books, uh, 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 let them uh, 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 they, they balance their books is, is by, by asking for, for contributions from, from people who visit there. Uh, there is much pro uh, poverty at, which needs to be elevate, uh, ele elevated uh, in, in the Western Cape, and this is ma uh, mainly although not to only, uh, due to a, a lot of people who move there because it's, it's, it's a, a very positive part of the country. And they move there from all over Afri South Africa, but also from other African countries. Uh, it has NGOs, including in, in education. And uh, we have just formed a group of people uh, who, who have decided we, we need to work together uh, with a couple of these NGOs, and you will hear more about that. Uh, one of the people here is Zenobia Kenny, who will speak this afternoon, and, and there are quite a number of other peop uh, groups uh, that work uh, uh, in such NGOs. <coughs> uh, uh, so, so, and these are, of course, in education. Uh, well, then, of course, the place is beautiful. Uh, uh, and and uh, I invite you to come and visit. And, uh, and I think it's an ideal place for a sesima. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and if we, if we can set, set one up there, it would be basically a continuation of the three-year Lamal Apart uh, project, which pilot project which we had in Pretoria. Uh, and uh, some of that expertise is still available uh, with, with our people. Um, now, the uh, reach of uh, such a system uh, unit, uh, I would want to talk a little bit about that. Um, uh, when establishing AIMS, which was also established in the Western Cape, uh, we had the vision of training scientists for all of Africa. And uh, we have kept to that. And it is, uh, it's a very successful program. <laughs> And this, despite the huge area of Africa, Africa has 30 million square kilometers surface area, which is uh, equal to the USA plus China plus Europe up to the, uh, to, up to the Urals. It's, it's, it's really very, very, very large. Uh, <clears throat> and despite the huge diversity and uh, despite its population of uh, when we, we, in 2002, it was one billion. Uh, I wrote it this way because in French it would be un milliard. Uh, and uh, it's now about 1.2 billion, uh, the population of uh, South Africa. 
Uh, and, but this, this Ames idea created a, a sense of purpose to overcome <coughs> poverty uh, uh, and underdevelopment in Africa and help build the infrastructure. There's, there are so many resources. There is no place in the world which is better resourced in terms of solar energy than we are, and we are not using it. And, and we have there's there's so many there's so much work to do, and I just wanted to say, uh, highlight that. And uh, and with scientists can work across the continent and globally, and we can all work together. They are all. Uh, alumni of this place now and they know each other and they, they, they form groups and they work together and, and that's so wonderful. Now when we think of doing uh, this with schools, it's a little harder I think, uh, although I don't want to say we can't do it, but locality is more becomes more important uh, because of, among other things, the constraint of language which has come up uh, here now quite often. And there are a huge number of uh, languages in Africa. Uh, I mean, if you think of Cameroon, I think there are 200 languages in Cameroon, and, and there are as many as that in, in uh, Nigeria and, and so on. Uh, and also the, uh, the uh, educational structures uh, are different, and the curricula are different, and the cultural aspects are different. The way you treat people, you greet them, and everything is, is so different that uh, uh, it's, 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 it's something you have to take into account when you, when you do things like this. Uh, well, the first step uh, for, for us, if we had f had such a place, would be star starting it off in, in the Western Cape, where we could make a really good, good uh, uh, center, and then we would create it across southern Africa, uh, South Africa, and uh, the nine provinces. South Africa has nine provinces and eleven uh, official languages, and this is already quite a uh, uh, quite a challenge. And uh, <clears throat> then. Uh, uh, Eng uh, English is still the official uh, one of the official languages, uh, w which we would use, of course. <coughs> and uh, and we have one, uh, and each province, each of the nine provinces, has its own uh, education department uh, for the implementation of, of programs and so on. But we have a basic education department, which in Pretoria, which has determines general policy and uh, the guidelines uh, and sets guidelines uh, for, for all of this. Uh, now the next step would be the inclusion of the SECU, which is called the South African, um, uh, uh, South African, uh, uh, Southern African uh, Customs Union, and it includes Botswana, Namibia, Lesotho, and Swaziland. And they would also be fall in quite reasonably easy because they're also English as main language and then uh, uh, the uh, other indigenous languages are also similar. And there are, uh, the school programs are similar. But the next great step would be to go, go for SADC, which is Southern African Development Community, which exists of 15 <coughs> states and a land area. Uh, of uh, almost uh, 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 10 million uh, square meters, uh, square uh, kilometers, and uh, it's the size of the USA, and a population of uh, 277 million people. <laughs> but what's good about th that area is that it has already decided th that they will go for a common future, and I finish now. Uh, uh, for, for a common future, and they have protocols on education and training, they have a protocol on science, technology, and innovation, and they're working towards unity of the, of the area. And as I said, 50% of the SADC uh, students uh, stay within SADC countries, uh, the mobile ones. Uh, and the languages involved there are English, French, Portuguese, Swahili, and many, many indigenous languages. 
<laughs> and I don't think uh, we should underestimate uh, the, the language problem, particularly if we want, want to start uh, with, with these programs quite early, because uh, uh, in the first three years, normally in, in, in all these regions, uh, there are still, uh, courses are still given in indigenous languages, and, and then there's a switch in grade four to English, uh, which is also quite a, quite a problem. Now, this is, this is uh, just a map of Africa, <clears throat> and the, light, uh, the, the dark green down there is SECU, that's the Customs Union, uh, which we are involved in, and then uh, the, the, <clears throat> the light, gray, uh, uh, light green uh, includes, uh, 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 includes French-speaking countries and, and also Portuguese-speaking countries. And, uh, but it is intended to be, uh, the uh, French-speaking countries are, are uh, Congo, which, uh, which was, from, it was a Belgian, uh, uh, and then Madagascar, which is a beautiful place, and, uh, and, and then also Mauritius, a very, uh, very well-organized uh, island. Uh, and the Seychelles, and, and they all belong to, to the... Uh, okay, I have to stop here, and uh, I, I hope I gave you a flavor of where I come from and where we want to work. <laughs> had a very good advocacy about Western Cape harboring a sesame center, and uh, you did it very well. So are there any questions, observations? Because we have to move. Yes, please. Uh, thank you very much for uh, this extensive uh, lecture about this, this term, uh, system in South Africa. Uh, I, ha I have a comment and a question. The comment, I completely agree with you about uh, when you, you talked about uh, that locality will be a challenge, a big challenge facing the sesame when we are thinking of having hub regional and serving different countries with uh, these different peculiarities and needs for each country. Uh, it will be a challenge for us to find the balance how to have functioning center, keeping the uh, localities and needs of each country and each region inside the country, this will be different. So I support your point here. Uh, the other question, when you talked at the early of your uh, presentation about uh, the universities of South Africa and it is the first in Africa, this is true. Uh, and then you said you have three types of schools and most of the students are belonging to type three, which is of lower quality. So how can you make this balance? You have uh, students, majority of the students of lower quality, and you still have good performance in the university because this is a big challenge. So how can you manage to do this? Or the students of low quality not, uh, don't have the chance to join universities in South Africa? can make it, but they, and that is actually a challenge for the universities, but many of them don't make it. And I would say about 80% of the schools are of this type, uh, are not, and, and the best, the high levels which we attain uh, are from the private schools and, and the uh, model C, uh, the fee paying schools. And, and that is actually very bad for our societal development. So, so we have to change. And the idea of developing these, uh, the, the uh, programs which we put together are actually in the areas of poverty where we put them together. <laughs> Uh, 